Somebody say household wickedness. There's a parable in tree that Abu Bibe Kawa never wound to me. Yeah. If an animal will bite you, it's in your own dress. My father used to say when he was alive, that said, upon trainee fins, you are saying, Ebe Kachel said, then Cheme Wa Jinidi. When the frog comes out of the river and tells you that the crocodile is dead, believe the frog. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. A man's who? Enemies or foes. Shall be those of another man's house. But those of what? His own house. Say household enemies. Every house has what the enemy has prescribed for them. There is a prescription for men and a prescription for women when it comes to families. And it is the reality of the spiritual world. And being born again don't exempt you. Being born again helps you to recognize the reality of the spiritual world and to empower you to deal with it. Genesis 4, 8 and 9. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? The audacity. The audacity. The arrogance. The pride. The ego. In the way he responded to Elohim. Adonai. Jehovah Jireh. The creator. Man born of a woman. Passes away. It's like the dust of the earth. Like the flower that faded. And like grass that withers away. By the going down of the sun. Has the audacity to answer the most high. Am I my brother's keeper? Household enemy. Abel was not killed from outside. He was killed from within. He was slain from within. The spirit of Abel still exists in families today they don't kill physically anymore but they are killing spiritually they are slaying people's character the spirit of character assassination killing and destroying from within anytime i watch cnn you see all these nigerian banks on cnn advertising on cnn there is no one ghanaian bank his own Nigerian bank. Dangote is a Nigerian that was powered by policies and laws that were made by the different governments of Nigeria to allow a Nigerian to rise to the occasion to become a household name, to go beyond the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to become a game changer at the marketplace. Not in Africa, but in the world. On the international market and scene. When shall we have Ghanaians with young, with what I call transgenerational wealth or transgenerational prosperity? When we can pass over wealth to another generation. The generations live and they die. Even the time the fathers die, before they die, they struggle to maintain what they have acquired. And when they are dead and gone, the sons and the daughters fight and kill and slay one another over wealth and property. Household wickedness. This wickedness of the spirit of Cain is ongoing. Spirits don't die. This spirit are still operating. They are still operating. Lift up your right hand and say, God is here, God is here, God is here. Say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Say, we interrupt and override every interference, manipulations and projections in the atmosphere 
in the environment. We block the enemy in the name of Jesus. Say we override sabotage in the name of Jesus. We override discomfort by the power of Jesus' name. Amen. The spirit of Cain is still prevailing in families today. Character assassination. We kill one another. When you travel on this road, you will see shops of foreigners. They've written, I love Ghana. Thank you, Ghana. Ghana has been good to them. Yeah. Yeah. Come with me. To Genesis 27, 37, 19 to 20. Genesis 37, 19 to 20. And they said one to another, yeah. Behold, this dreamer cometh. Say Come mockery. To. Say mockery. Lift up your hand and say arrest. arrest. Say I arrest. By the power of Jesus' name, the spirit of mockery. Yeah, it's very common in Ghana. When any Ghanaian tries to do something, they'll say, what do you think you are doing? Where do you think you are going? Who do you think you are? Mockery. You can't do it. I always say that Ernest Terricone, old friend of mine, Italian, he built Transaco and Villaggio. The tallest building in this country standing there, it was built by a foreigner. And if it was a Ghanaian that attempted to build that thing, he would have been dead and buried by now or investigated by every government that came into office. Who do you think you are? Where did you get the money from? How dare you? What makes you think you can build something like this? To come and sit in our house, household wicked. What is killing us is not the slave, ma the slave masters. For we were the ones who delivered ourselves to the slave masters. We are the ones betraying one another. We are the ones selling ourselves. We are the ones killing one another. Household wickedness. And until something is done about it, we will always be disadvantaged and we will always be limited. And it has nothing to do with the color of our skin. Neither has it anything to do with who your father or your mother is. Or the circumstances surrounding your birth. Or the day or the month or the year. Or the geographical location where you were born. It has everything to do with household wickedness. Put your hands together. Strangers and foreigners can come and succeed in this nation. But we don't accept our, the prosperity of our own. People like Zoom Lion, I don't know what party he belongs to. He's not a member of my church, but he's a Ghanaian. And I don't know how he runs his business, but I'm passionate about Ghanaians. I have love for country. I love my country. But I've noticed over the years, I've watched him. Every government that has come have done everything to bring him down. Whether he does business wrong or right, that is not my issue. But we will take from Ghanaians and give it to strangers and foreigners. We will not empower our own. When are we going to help our own to do right? When are we going to empower our own to succeed? We are raising a society and a generation without hope without direction and confidence because we don't have we don't have in this country points of references to show that it can be done what makes America America is the private sector not the government, not politicians that ordinary people have made it at the marketplace who have become game changers to motivate others that the ordinary man can rise from nowhere and become somebody. When, will, when are we changing and when will we change the culture of this country and stop killing our heroes and stop bringing down one another? And until that day, there is no hope for Africa. We we'll continue to remain as beggars 
we can have all the mineral resources in this world like DLC and many countries in Africa and yet be impoverished because we have never learned and known how to empower our own and to celebrate our own. Go ahead. Mockery. Genesis 37. Come now therefore and let us slay him. And this, 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 this were not outside the soul. This were not outside the speaking. This were bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. From the same loins came all these ones and saw their own blood. Flesh of their flesh, bone of their bone and said, come and let us slay him. Let's kill him. Go ahead, see. Come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. Tell somebody the dream. Tell somebody the dream, the dream, the dream. The dream is your dream they are looking for. They are out for your dream. You are the dreamer of your family. You are carrying a dream. You were born to fulfill a dream. Martin Luther King one day stood up in America and said, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day the black man and the white man will sit in the same classroom I have a dream that one day the black man and the white man would drive in the same bus in Alabama. I have a dream that one day my little children will not be defined by the color of their skin, but they shall be defined by character, but not by the color of their skin. I have a dream. Your dream makes you an enemy in your own house. Joseph was the youngest. And all of his brothers set their eyes on Joseph because of the dream. He wasn't hated by outsiders. He was hated from within. The conspiracy was from within. I have a dream that one day my little kids will not be judged by the color of their skin by, but by the content of their character. They came for their own. They slew their own brother from within and not from without. He was so, he was so to strangers. Not by another family, but by his own brethren. Because of a dream. They said, we'll slay him. We'll kill him prematurely. And see what shall become of his dream. Your dream has made you a target. Your dream has made you an enemy. When my mother passed, I saw something from some of my siblings that shocked me. I never knew that that was there. It was the same thing when my daddy passed. I saw some things that he used to tell me I never understood. And I realized that there is a possibility that I am a loner. That even though I have many siblings, that I'm alone. And that I have to get used to the fact that there's a possibility that I am alone. That I may be surrounded by many brothers and sisters, but I am alone among many because of what I carry. Because of my dream. I don't know what dream you carry, but your dream can make you a target. Your dream can set you up for assassination. Your dream can set you up to be eliminated before your time. From within your own household, a man's enemy shall be those of his own house. The spirit of Cain 
and the spirit of the brothers of Joseph is still alive today. They're not, they are not killing us physically anymore, but they are killing us spiritually. Yeah. I have a dream. Judges chapter 9 verse 5. Then he went to his father's house at Ophrah and killed his brothers, the 70 sons of Jerubal, on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubal, was left because he hid himself. Tell somebody I will escape. I, I, I want you to say it with an attitude. Say, I will escape. I will escape. Say, I will escape the sword of the enemy and the sword of my brethren. I will escape. Seventy sons of Gideon were eliminated by a brother. A brother that was insecure felt that he had the right to lord it over others. That he was the only one who deserved to be a leader and a king. That nobody else deserved to be a leader. He did not want opposition from anybody. And that is the spirit that rules our political parties in Africa. That one party will go to every extent to eliminate the other party. It has become a vicious cycle. We kill one another. We character assassinate one another. We destroy one another. And it has become a vicious cycle. And the country is going merry-go-round. And we are not moving after 62 years. We are still marking time. Going nowhere. Because we can't handle opposition. We don't know how to deal with opposition. If you oppose me, I must kill you. But an opposition is simply somebody who has a different opinion to yours. That is all it is. And people must be allowed to have their own opinion. But the fact that somebody doesn't agree with you doesn't mean the person must be killed, must be slain, must be destroyed. But that is the politics of Africa. If you don't agree with me, I'll kill you. I'll take you to a babalao. Yeah. I'll pass somewhere and finish you. I was telling them at the first service how when I got ill and I lost three of my fingers, my mother was there in Abekuta. My mother is Nigerian. Grandmother is Nigerian. And my father said, take him to his mother's people. They took it to my auntie. Then my auntie took me to this powerful guy in Zongo. And every night, different tribes will come for me. And he will back in with them and say, I'm not giving him up. I won't give him up. And he will say something like this. Sha Allah. And I remember one time, my auntie brought me food. And he put a live chicken and told my auntie to step over the live chicken. And when she was attempting to step over the live chicken, she fell. And the man said to her, Madam, why are you here to tempt me? Are you here to try me or what? Why did you bring him to me when you are the one responsible for what is happening? And my auntie said, it is not him. It is his father we are looking for. And we've tried everything. His father is too powerful. So we are doing this to him to hurt the father. A lot of the things our children go through is not because of them. It's because of who we are. That when the enemy can't get you, he will, he will attack what you love as a way of getting at you. But it will not work. Whatever they meant for evil, it shall turn for good. I stand here today before heaven and earth and proclaim by the power of Jesus' name that whatever they meant for evil, it will turn for good. If you believe it, put
put your hands together shout the air sit down for two minutes and I remember I remember my auntie got sick and she was admitted at the hospital and before she died she sent for me that she had to confess something she needed to tell me something so I was going to go so I told my daddy I said pa my auntie want to see me and my father said don't go and I said why and he said she wants to exchange her life with yours and I'll prove it it's in the Bible I'll show it to you demonic exchange I met a guy a few days ago in this church we were praying for him and the Holy Spirit said you were to be born on 26 of so so and so and in your destiny you are supposed to be president of this country but they switched it and you were born on the 27th and when you were born on the 27th some people came around and your mother could not protect you and they switched your destiny and all along when I see him I know that he was born to be president but I didn't know why it didn't happen until recently when the Holy Spirit said they switched it you were to be born 26 but they switched it to 27 And he said, I've always known it. I've always known it. And the Lord said, but if you serve me well, one of your children will fulfill that destiny in the bloodline. It wasn't an enemy that betrayed Joseph. It was from his, it was from his own house. David said the other day in Psalm 55, he said, it was not an enemy that did this to me. I could have handled it. Yeah. So it wasn't an enemy. But it was there. Psalm 55, look at the verse. From verse 12. He said, but it was thou a man. My equal. My equal. My acquaintance. A friend. We took sweet counsels of God together. We went to the house of God together. We ate together in the same bowl. It was thou, a friend, a companion, my equal. Not an enemy. For it was an enemy. I could have handled it. But it was thou. Read. Read. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. It's not an enemy that is reproaching us, ladies and gentlemen. This thing, eh? Everyone to me. And you know the reason why we don't know? Because we are always looking at other places. But it's close. Apostle Paul said, A turn was given to me in the flesh. That means it's close. It's tight. And you are looking elsewhere. When Haman conspired to kill Mordecai and the conspiracy backfired, the decree did not change. And even though Haman died, the decree was still in force. And years after, the decree was going to be carried out. To annihilate all the Jews spreading from Ethiopia to India. 124 provinces. And Queen Esther went to King Ahasuerus and said the conspiracy of Haman, though he's dead, is still in force. I need you to annul the decree. And the king said, I can't touch it because of my seal. But he said, there is something I can do for you, Queen Esther. Go, write a new law. Bring it. I will put my seal on it to, re to replace the old law. The old must go and the new must come. You did, I said the old must go for the new to come. The new will not come as long as the old is in place. And that's why I'm preaching this message that there is wickedness in our families and wickedness in nations. Household wickedness. 
For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. He said, if it was an enemy, then I will understand that that is what enemies does. But it was not an enemy. It's one that I trusted. A bosom friend and a brother. One that I shared my secret with. One that I stood naked before. And I opened myself up. And told my secret. And I made myself vulnerable to. Who knows my secret. And whom I know his secret. I was telling somebody the other day. I said. Be careful of people you tell your secret. Because. When something. Laid his head. On the tie of Delilah. And told Delilah his secret. It was just a matter of time. Liar Kuva does it. Imalakanda lubahandi asat Meliku walasit Ikafandu wahan Dei kulabahan Dayavaki itula Wasindi kahandasiyas Let no man and woman Disadvantage us By the way of any secret Or information they have on us But thou oh Lord are a shield About us Our glory and the lifter of our head Put your hands together and shout yes. Let not any son or daughter of this house be disadvantaged. In the name of Jesus. Let not our sons and our daughters become a play. Become a victim to any manipulation or the works of household witchcraft or wickedness. Sit down for two minutes. Go ahead. Neither was it he that hated me. He said, it wasn't an enemy. And it wasn't he that hated me. I could have understood that you hate me. You don't like me. But this was somebody who I thought loved me. Cared about me. And that we cared about each other. Look at it. Go ahead. Neither was it he that hated me that magnified that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. Yeah. But it was thou. It was thou. A man my equal. A man my equal. My, my colleague. My guide. My guide. And my, my acquaintance. My guide. My guide. My guide. When I needed direction, I came to you. You were my guide. My bosom friend. You had the counsels of Adonai. My guide and my acquaintance, we took sweet counsel together. My acquaintance, we took sweet counsels. To, we exchanged secrets together, and we walked unto the house of God in company. We walked together to the house of God in company. Look at the prayer he prayed. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. Yeah, there is wickedness, household wickedness. Somebody say, Household wickedness. They set you up never to recover and to rise again. David said in Psalm 3, Oh Lord, why have they increased and are doing well that have set themselves against me? For many have said, there is no hope for you. You are finished. But he said, Lord, it doesn't matter how advanced the plan is. It doesn't matter how close it is. Thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the lift up of my head. If you believe it, lift up your hands and shout, Yeah! <laughs> lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I want you to pray in the spirit for one minute. Just one minute. Just one minute. La Cuba has. Le Carandi Cassis. Somebody talk to the Father for one minute. Mandaras. Elambosa. E Kalibakusa, E Pondarasia, E Kabadi Asit, 
Hey! 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 Imalaka mandola makadalasa. Mukarida baku puti si kalabro gaza. Dili karinda busi anda. Akandili abada na hus. Ilamara yada. Sit down for two minutes. Please sit for two minutes. The Bible said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many. Not few. Many are the afflictions. Not of the unrighteous, but the righteous. Yeah. Sometimes you ask yourself, Lord, why? Why? How long? Will it go on this way? How long? Paul said, We've made others rich and we are poor. You bless other people's children. You pray for others. You wish others well. You fight for others. And you say, Lord, how about mine? Why? But many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. Out of them all. Do this. Out of them all. Say deliverance out of all. Yeah. Out of all affliction. Deliverance. As we go around you see. David was a king. One of the best kings ever in Israel. The flag of Israel still carries the star of David up to today. No king of Israel but the star of David. No king ever, ever sat on that throne that followed God like David. He was a king, a prophet. He was a seer. He was a man after God's own heart. But you should see the problems the troubles in the house and in the family of David his own son Absalom rose against him and told his father I'm going to Hebron to perform sacrifice only to build his own kingdom against his father's kingdom in Jerusalem won the heart of the men of Israel to undermine his own father it was so close that the father did everything not to kill Absalom. And he ended up hanging himself and dying prematurely. He joined with Ahitophel, Solomon's great grandfather. And when David heard that Absalom had joined with Ahitophel against him, the Bible says, and the conspiracy was strong. And David went to God and said, God, I may be vulnerable. I may be disadvantaged. I'm not in a good standing with you. But this one thing I need you to do. Oh, thou that answered prayers, turn the counsel of Ahitophel into foolishness. Come with me to Judges 15, 11 to 13. Judges 15, 11 to 13. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of 3, the rock. 3,000 men went after one man. 3,000 of men of his own household. His own countrymen. What is delivering us up to the enemy? It's not strangers. It's our own countrymen. And women. It's wickedness of our own household. And wickedness of our own countrymen and women. His own. No matter how strong you are. How anointed you are. You must learn the skill of mastering within your own walls. Because if the enemy can undermine you within your walls. You are vulnerable. Listen. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock Etam and said to Samson knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us what is this that thou hast done unto, them, unto us and he said unto them as they did unto me so have I done unto them and they said unto him 
We are come down to bind thee. We have come. We are your own. We are born of your bone. Flesh of your flesh. But we have come to bind you up. Go ahead. That we may deliver thee into the hand that of the Philistines. That we may deliver you into the hands of the enemy. Ladies and gentlemen. It's not an enemy. That have sold your destiny. Or delivered you up. It is said that. The house minds or rat eh, is the one that shows the outside one where the meat is in the house. Yeah. Yeah. 3,000 of his own countrymen came to him and said, we have decided to deliver you to the enemy because the enemy can lay hands on you. You are too powerful for the enemy. So we have decided to betray you and to deliver you up for destruction. May the Lord grant you divine escape. May the Lord grant your children divine escape. May you escape the sword of the brethren. And the some... most fearful thing in life is not the sword of the enemy. But it's the sword of your brethren. Yeah. 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 Jesus said to Judas, Have thou betrayed me with a kiss? You betrayed your master with a kiss? That you kiss me? As a statement of affection and love. And yet, in your love is hatred and bitterness. And betrayal that you betray the son of man with a kiss. Oh, Kavis, Leah Katz, Vadu, Wasis, Alind, Ikand, Valahandu, Vand, Dei Suku, Wahans, Lafatu, the Kandi Amas, Lahanda, Laku, Walahasinda, Bambarian, Delekia, Igund, Alasa. You betray the son of God with a case. Go ahead. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. Uh -huh. He said, You are born of my bone and flesh of my flesh. I can kill the enemy, but I don't want to lift up a finger or a sword against my own flesh. Swear unto me. That I will not fall by the sword my own brethren and my house. As for the enemy, I don't mind. You tie me up. When I get there, we'll see. And if you read, you will see what he did to them. When they delivered him up and they left him, he said, Now you claim to be enemies. I will show you what I got. And he slew them. Are you hearing me? But it was his own house and countrymen that delivered him out. May you not be delivered up to the enemy. Pray that those you trust and those you count and depend on will not betray you at the Kairos time of your life. That you will not be betrayed, betrayed in the prime of your life. A lady in this church she made it, she beat it for something. And for years, she kept fasting, praying. And it went through. And everything was said. She was to travel to a country to go and sign the deal to finalize it. The very day she traveled, she went to, to take a bath. She slipped in the bathroom and she broke her leg. And she couldn't travel. She was in such pain. No painkiller could stop it. She missed the opportunity at the prime time of her life. You will not miss it at the prime time of your life. There is a pastor, one of my pastors. He's sitting here. He's here right now. I sponsored him to go to Israel. Everything was set. When they got to the airport, 
he had a heart attack. So they called and said, Papa, Pastor So So and So have a heart attack. I said, It's not a heart attack, it's a sabotage. I said, You take him to the hospital, he'll be fine. They took him to the hospital. As soon as the plane took off, he was fine. So one of the bishops said, Papa, what was this? I said, this is a sabotage and embargo. It's an embargo that he won't sit in a plane. Uncle baby. Uh. Then, there's another two guys. They are here. I spent three times. I did everything to get them a visa. They turned them down. So I went to the embassy and spoke to the ambassador and said, these are my people. I know that I can guarantee. This guy, he had driven for about 30 years. He's not going anywhere. He's coming back. I did on that taking, did everything. They gave him the visa, two of them. When they landed in Tel Aviv, they allowed everybody to go and they grounded the two of them. I was sleeping 3 a.m. and they woke me up. And I have to call the ambassador in Ghana. And the ambassador have to call the foreign minister. And the foreign minister have to call the head of immigration in Israel. For hours, up, down, up, down before they released them. Then they came out. When they were going to the whaling wall, going through normal security, everybody passed. They stopped the two of them. <laughs> Hear me. When they got to the whaling wall, one of them, one of them, knelt down at the whaling wall, praying, and the soldiers with AK-47 rushed there and put the gun on him and arrested him because at the whaling wall, people are not supposed to kneel. You are supposed to stand. And he didn't know that. So they suspected him that he was trying to do something. Yeah. So they arrested at the wailing wall, even at the gate of heaven. They pursued them to the gate of heaven. Somebody shout mercy. I had a pastor, he used to be in this church. He made it now, so he doesn't need me anymore. So he left me. But he didn't know that he has limited himself. He could have had more than what he has. The little exposure I gave him, he thought he's made it. But when he was with me, every time we travel, so I have to stop traveling with him. Any time we travel, when we get to our destination, his suitcase will never be seen. Everybody's suitcase will come but his. Until the day we are leaving, then mysteriously his suitcase will appear. So one day I said, Wafa, why? Why? He said, Papa, eh, me fear for. I said, Why are you saying you're fear for? Why? You are born again. He said, Papa, you don't understand. I said, What do you mean I don't understand? He said, I am the first to sit in a plane in my family. So what they are saying is, if we can't stop him in sitting in the plane, as for his suitcase. Somebody shout mercy. Household wickedness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll give you two scriptures and I'll stop. We'll continue tomorrow. Second Kings 11, 1 and 2. Atalia. Second Kings. And when Atalia the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead. She arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Jehusheba, the daughter of the king Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nest, in a bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. Tell somebody I will escape. Oh, say it with an answer. Say, I will escape. Say, my seed shall escape. In the name of Jesus. How 
can a grandmother, how can a grandmother slay all her grandchildren for power? For relevance, for accolades, for gold, for money, for influence. A grandmother slew all her grandchildren to reign only for six years. A grandmother. May you not be slain in the name of Jesus. And anything they are programmed between now and the end of this year. For our mothers to become widows. For our wives to be widows. Let it boomerang in the name of Jesus. Whatever they are programmed for our children to be fatherless. Let it boomerang in the name of Jesus. Anything they meant, they mean for evil. They plan for evil. Let it turn for good in the name of Jesus. Let it turn, 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 turn for good. Clap your hands and say, we turn evil for good. We turn evil for good. Turn it. Turn, turn, turn. Turn the evil for good. Turn it. Amen. I have many things to do. Nahum 3. Nahum chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Because Nahum. of the multitude of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts. Read that, again, start again. Because of the, because of the multitude multitudes. of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot. Well-favored harlot. May they be disfavored in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord would turn the favors into those who use their favors to disadvantage us into disfavor. That their honors will turn into dishonor and their access will be denied them in the name of Jesus. That they will be stripped of their trusted weapons by the power of Jesus' name. Say amen. Go ahead. The mistress of witchcraft. The mistress of witchcraft. Listen. That sell nations through her wardoms. They sell nations through sex. And families through, through their sex. witchcraft. They sell nations through sex. And they sell families by manipulation, by charm and spell, and through sex, by the power of witchcraft. They sell nations. They sell government. They sell the destinies of nations into destruction. And they sell the destinies of families and individuals in the families to destruction by sleeping with elders and sleeping with strategic people. Through sex, they switch destinies and they destroy nations and they sell families. But let it be overturned in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and pray right now for Ghana. Pray for families sold. Pray for families. Pray for nations. Pray for Ghana. Somebody open your mouth. Say something. Pray. Put your hands together. Don't let your flesh. Don't let your flesh overwhelm you. Take authority over your flesh. Deal with the mistress of witchcraft. Who sells families? Destinies of families. Destinies of nations. Open your mouth. Somebody. Lift up prayer. Break loose. Break free. Hold not your peace. Strike. Strike. Appoint the sword. Deploy the sword. Engage the sword. Strike the enemy. You've held your peace for too long. You've been quiet for too long. It's time to strike. It's time to open your mouth. It's time to say something.
Push, 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 push. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Let yourself go. Strike, 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 strike. The mistress of witchcraft. Engage the sword. Engage the sword. Deploy the sword. Apply the sword. Speak. Say something. Don't spare. Don't hold back. Strike, strike, strike. 